I'm Dustin Hansen with Greywell Entertainment. And I'm Zane Pendleton with Greywell and the Salt Pop Media site. This is the Greywell Entertainment update for release day of Tuesday 8-6, August 6th, the first release day of August. The blazing summer continues. It's been feast or famine with all the release days. They're either very big or very small, and today is a very big one. Yeah, it's huge. Uh, I have a whole stack of stuff to talk about, and it's all just metal or metal related stuff and then Dustin has a lot of stuff to run through first. So first I'm going to talk about a couple uh, vinyl releases that are metal that are really cool and uh, worth noting. I've got the new album from Revocation. Um, as far as I can tell it's just self-titled. Um, this is like, I don't know, I think their fourth or fifth album but I mean it's not their first for sure. Um, they're on Relapse and I'd say of all this stuff that's kind of that blend of technical death metal and thrash kind of crossed all together. These guys are probably one of the best at it just because they're still interesting to listen to without being overly technical. And uh, it's actually really interesting songwriting because of the technicality in it. So it's a little smarter than an average death metal album, but it's not too uh, smart to be off-putting and just uh, guitar noodling. So I have it on CD I like that as well. Too. Um, also on Relapse, got the new Exhumed album. It's called uh, Necrocracy or Necrocracy, however you want to pronounce that. Uh, Exhumed has been around since the early 90s. They're influenced, they're like a classic just death metal band influenced by like early Carcass and Entombed and stuff like that. Just that 90s death metal sound. They broke up for a while, reformed, they're on Relapse and uh, this is a new album from them. We've got this on vinyl and on CD as well. And then uh, one more vinyl release to talk about real, real quick. Um, we've got this album from Dead in the Dirt, The Blind Hole. Um, these guys are actually signed to Southern Lord. Southern Lord is another awesome, awesome metal label that I don't think we've mentioned before in the podcast, but uh, metal Lord, or Southern Lord is fantastic for metal, uh, hardcore, doom, just tons and tons of releases, but they're all in the extreme music genre. Um, Southern Lord released a lot of like Suns records and stuff like that too. So. Um, or all of them, actually, right? So, uh, anyway, Dead in the Dirt is uh, crusty, crusty metallic hardcore. Um, it fits in with a lot of the stuff that they've been releasing on Southern Lord. Stuff like Nails and uh, other things I mentioned on the, on the video before that's related to that. So, it's got that uh, buzzsaw guitar tone. And uh, there's like 22 tracks on this album, but none of them are... Like there's a, a rare few are over two minutes to three minutes. Some of them are as short as 20 seconds. So if that's your kind of thing, just grinding metallic hardcore, this is a really great album for that. So then uh, also on Southern Lord, I'll jump to them real fast. Got the band Centuries. Um, they're from Florida. Um, this album is called Tadium Vitae. Uh, I'll spell it in the description for you. Um, but it's also, it sounds a lot like Dead in the Dirt. It's got that same metallic hardcore, just grinding, really aggressive um, stuff. And it's on Southern Lord. So also really cool. And then I have a whole stack of other metal releases to talk about. It's a big, <laughs> big release day. So I'm going to go through some of these kind of fast. Um, there's a new album from uh, the metalcore band Asking Alexandria. They're the English metalcore band. They've been around for a while. So this is their new album there. Got a new album from Deadlock, um, the European uh, symphonic or melodic death metal band. Um, features female clean vocals mixed with male typical death metal vocals. Um, so it's got lots of good quotes from other guys in bands and other music publications. That's on Napalm Records, which we've mentioned before. Um, also on Napalm, we've got Power Wolf. Um, Power Wolf Preachers of the Night is the new album. This is just straight power metal to the max. Um, they're a combination. German, Romanian, Dutch uh, power metal band. Uh, this is actually the limited edition version of this. It's in like this nice book format with like a hard cover and it's got a bonus disc. Um, it looks like it's, uh, it's orchestral tracks, like maybe they're just instrumental tracks of the album. So um, that's also cool if you're a fan. Um, New album from I wrestled, wrestled a bear once. I don't listen to these guys, but um, they're kind of that melodic metal core mixed with a million different other genres. It's kind of popular right now. Um, they're on Century Media now, which is kind of, well, maybe they've always have been, but they're not a typical Century Media band. Um, Norma Jean are back. They have a brand new album called Wrongdoers. Norma Jean's just kind of been steadily chugging releases out every couple of years. Um, it's been a little while since the last one, so they're all of a sudden back 
with this album here. And we actually have free posters to give away that have, it's an adapted version of this cover artwork that yeah, you can pick up from any very well. Like a, a heavy paper lithograph. Yeah, it's like a nice lithograph poster. So um, this is Newstead and it's Jason Newstead, the former uh, bassist for Metallica through a lot of their nineties, nineties output. He's also in Voivod. This one's just called Heavy Metal Music is the name of the album. Um, it features guys from others, other bands like Stained and some other hard rock and metal acts. Um, it's not as heavy as a lot of the metal, like a lot of the stuff that he was involved in with Metallica during his time with Metallica, but sounds related to that. So if you're a Metallica fan, especially of that, uh, after and justice for all era, then this, you should definitely check this out. I also have the new album from Impiety. This is the uh, the black metal band. They're on Hell's Headbangers. Interesting note with these guys is they're Singaporean. Singaporean? They're from Singapore. Uh, so it's uh, they're they're kind of rare in the fact that they're from. Uh, there's not very many metal bands or black metal bands from that region, from Southeast Asia. So uh, and they've actually been around for a long time and they're very popular. And this is getting some good reviews. So. And then I have a new album from James Labrie. James Labrie is actually the vocalist for Dream Theater, and he's also collaborating for, with uh, some other Dream Theater peeps on this. Um, it's described here as Gothenburg-styled metal, progressive wit, and ever-present catchiness. So if you're a fan of uh, Dream Theater, uh, you could probably assume that you're going to like this. It's going to be prog metal that sounds like Gothenburg metal is stuff from Gothenburg, Sweden. That's like uh, Dark Tranquility. Uh, at the gates, in flames, all that kind of stuff is from that area. So, and then one more called Witherscape. Um, the album is called The Inheritance. This is actually uh, Dan Swano or Swano. Uh, he's from Edge of Sanity and Bloodbath. He's actually doing a uh, an album. It's for fans of Opeth, Catatonia, and Amorphous. So if you're a fan of kind of that dark, dark uh, rock and dark metal from Europe, this is definitely your jam this week and I'm done talking about metal so now it's Dustin's turn <laughs> there's a lot of stuff and that's barely hardly anything I left out a lot of things too so there's a nice pile of metal on the floor I'm ducking under the camera sorry it's really heavy all right going to the regular releases well there are other releases non-metal we have right now um the Civil Wars self-titled uh this is their new album um but it's also probably their last album they uh imploded on tour and while they were recording this it's produced by charlie peacock with guest production by rick rubin on a couple tracks it's on columbia records major label debut kind of idea um you can read about it on their blog but they decided to call it quits because they uh they call it irreconcilable differences between the band members um but it's beautiful uh it has a little bit more instrumentation to most of the songs from what i listened to today uh compared to the last one it was really stripped down so there's a little bit more instrumentation but it's still Beautiful harmonies, really well written songs, very, you know, sad songs. There's one called Same Old, Same Old that I think pretty much laments their, their breakup. It kind of just says, this is why we're breaking up. You can just hear it in the song. So uh, really cool artwork on this as well. Uh, the, out, the LP comes with a CD inside, and then we also have it on CD. But Civil Wars, if you're into that alt-country sound, those, you know, guy-girl harmonies, can't go wrong. Uh, a new album called Dumb, Dumb Numbers. It features uh, Adam Harding with Lou Barlow, Dale Crover from the Melvins, everyone loves, Murph from Dinosaur Jr., uh, Bob Bruno from Best Coast, and David Lynch did the cover art, which David Lynch cover art just makes me like it e even more. Um, it's an odd thing. It's on Joyful Noise. It's not just indie. It's not weird electronic. It's kind of a mix of everything. It's really, really cool. It's a massive, there's a, there's a lot of name dropping going on in the front, so much that there's a joke about name dropping on yeah. the actual album itself. It says, it's have you ever a... seen such ridiculous name droppage? Yeah, we haven't recently, but good job, <laughs> Joyful Noise. Good album. Um, Explosion in the Sky are, out, are back with a new uh, soundtrack. It's a soundtrack to a new movie starring uh, Paul Rudd and someone else. I can't remember the other person in it, but they, uh, they paint highways lines out in like the backwoods of Texas, and it's a really interesting indie film that's coming out. Uh, it's called Prince Avalanche, and it's Explosion in the Sky and David Wingo. Um, it's not your typical Explosions in the Sky sound. Uh, it's very, it's a lower key version of what they did for like the Friday Night Lights soundtrack, stuff like that. 
the television series, not the actual original stuff. The songs, they've kind of stripped those down even more for the television series. But uh, if you're an Explosion in the Sky fan, I highly suggest pick it up. It's very, very meditative and, and sweet and also melancholy at the same time. Very, very cool. So check that out. Uh, next new album for the week, Polyphonic Spree, the giant hippie collective, 45 people on stage singing all at once. Um, this comes with a digital download card. The album is called Yes, It's True. And as a side note, they are playing the Stateroom, a uh, great local venue. If you guys haven't been there, you should go uh, support the guys at the Stateroom. It's a wonderful venue. Uh, they play on uh, September 12th. It's not August 12th. I mean, sorry, August 12th, 8-12, um, at uh, the Stateroom. And tickets we do sell here at Graywell. So come pick it up. Can they fit 45 people on the stage at Stateroom? I would assume so. <laughs> I don't really know it's 45, but it, last time I saw him at a festival, there was a lot of people on stage, a lot of people singing. So, wearing cult robes. <laughs> yes. Uh, there's a cool reissue collection. Um, it's Elvis at Stax. Stax is the classic soul label. Um, Elvis went to Stax Studios in Memphis and uh, recorded uh, a bunch of songs on. This is the LP version of it, which is this the regular. Can't, we have this on a two CD version as well, and then they have a special edition three a special edition three CD version. Uh, on the first disc, it's R and B and country sessions, the outtakes. Disc two is the pop sessions, and disc three is the nineteen the December nineteen seventy three masters, and then the July masters are also on here. So there's uh, Elvis stuff. That's this is kind of cooler Elvis. This is like hipster Elvis. It's not it's not just his. I don't know, he, fat old Elvis, but he, he these were really cool. So this is a really good collection. Come check this out. Everyone loves fat old Elvis anyway. Um, KT Tunstall has a new record. It's on Blue Note. There's a regular edition and a deluxe edition. The deluxe edition on CD has four extra tracks. KT Tunstall, she had a breakout track a couple years ago uh, that, I can't remember the name of the song, Black Tree, Black Cherry Tree or something. Yeah, it was a big deal and everybody bought that album. And, mm -hmm. and then her last album haven't sold as much, but this is actually the best thing she's done, I think, ever. Has some of that uh, alt-country sound, has some folk sound to it, has some just straight rock sound to it. Very, very cool record. And she is actually playing the same venue, the State Room, on uh, October 8th. So you can get tickets for her to see, you know, pick up the new album on Tuesday and then you can actually go see her if you like her. She's quite good. Right now is a good time for her to come back because that stuff's all very Yeah, and it's a good meld of all of it. Right yeah, now, it's, yeah. Not, it's not just a one-off, you know, or a one style. She mixes it up and she's got a really great voice, good, really good songwriting. Uh, Old Crow Medicine Show has a new EP out. It's a three-song single, basically. First song is Carry Me Back to Virginia, which is on the Carry Me Back album that just came out. And then there's an uh, alternate version of Ain't Enough and then a cover of the Dixie, or the Alabama classic Dixieland Delight. Um, Old Crow is one of my favorite bands ever. Lots of banjos and great singing. and really For fans cool. of uh, alt country and Americana and... Yeah. That methamphetamine sound. <laughs> like they, <they're laughs> that meth belt sound. Yeah. <laughs> great album. Or a great EP. But anything else they have done is really good. Uh, this new one's called Volto. This is Danny Carey from uh, Tool. It's his side project featuring uh, John Ziegler, Lance Morrison, and Jeff Babco. Um, I have not heard this yet, but I was told if you like Danny Carey and you like his drumming, this is for you. Well, let's be honest. If you're a Tool fan, chances are you're a rabid Tool fan. And if you're a rabid Tool fan, you're going to buy anything that anybody in Tool has been involved yeah. in. So come buy this. Yeah. Can't be any weirder than Pussifer, so I think you're good <laughs> shit. <laughs> Uh, one of our favorite labels has a new release this week. Population 1280s back with a new album called Imps of Perversion. Uh, Sacred Bones stuff. Not lot, much else to explain. If you know Sacred Bones, you kind of know how the releases are going. I've heard him described as cyberpunk. So if you could imagine a Sacred Bones release, it's weird, electronic, kind of abrasive. Um, it's it's cool stuff though. Sacred Bones. We've talked about them before. It's one of our it's one of our top labels here. The the, the company we like it a lot. Let's go. Uh, new Empty Flowers. Empty Flowers is, uh, they had an album come out last year, but they're, it's remaining members of, of one of my favorite bands ever, Cable. Doesn't sound as much like Cable. Cable was like um, gritty, stoner, like crust rock, um, like, you know, clutch, but meaner. <laughs> With less groove, I guess you could say. Uh, but I really like Empty Flowers. I really enjoyed their last one, and this one's a brand new one. It's called uh, Five. Creative name. Uh, Jake Bellows' new album. It's the lead singer from Neva De Neva DeNova. Um, this is on Saddle Creek, so you kind of know what you're getting. Probably some sad indie. 
Um, There's been some previews online and some of the music sites and stuff like that. Some pre-hype people excited for it. So yeah. the album's called New Ocean. So check that out. Uh, Mad Child on Battle Axe Records on from Battle Axe on Suburban Noise. He is from is it Swollen Members. Swollen Members. Thank you. Uh, Album's called Lawnmower Man. We got this in. If you're a hip hop guy and you're into that battle act stuff, this is for you. And yeah. the Suburban Noise guys too. You know, you're not a whole lot of hip hop this week, so yeah, that's, that's really that's like your thing. And then we have uh, one little piece we want to talk about. That's kind of an odd. Uh, it's on Thirsty Ear. It's really low key, almost electronic sounding. It's like uh, minimalist. It's it's produced and sounds almost electronic, but it's played with uh, real instruments. I mean, it's drums, bass, and piano. But it, you'd, you'd swear you're actually listening to something that was programmed, the way that it's played and produced. Mm -hmm. um, the band's called Dawn of Midi. The album is Dysnomia. And uh, it's, like you said, it's really minimalist sounding. It sounds like minimalist electronic music. It's kind of something that you can listen to and zone out to. Yeah, it reminds me of like a minimalist, minimal, a minimalist, I can't say that word. Minimalist? Minimalist version of like Fridge. And, uh, you know, that stuff. Fortet. Kind of like that idea. That's what I like. Yeah. And I can't say minimalist. Repetitive apparently. grooves. Stuff like that. Zone, cool. zone out music. Uh, we're talking about some vinyl reissues that are out. Uh, one of my favorite bands ever, Corrosion and Conformity. This is their first record, Eye for an Eye, Back on Black. Um, awesome. Mike Dean on bass and vocals. You know, the, the corrosion that everyone believes is the true corrosion. Mike Dean. So whatever. That's all good. But this is awesome. It's back on vinyl. Uh, one of the best Talking Heads records out there ever, uh, produced by Brian Eno. Um, this is Fear of Music. If you don't know what's on Fear of Music, you should listen to Talking Heads because they're great. And I hope these are going to continue to come. If they start really, they've released a couple of them. I hope the rest of the series, all rest of their discography comes out. Yeah, the jacket on this reissue is really cool too. It's got like a diamond plate texture. I don't know if you can see it, but yeah. it's actually textured like that. It's like, like the it's old a original nice one. It's basically just jacket. redone. It's, it's really nice. Um, not a major reissue, but it's a reissue of a band that we love. I love uh, very much the Water Liars. These guys are fantastic. Their last album, or their newest album, Wyoming, came out a few months back. It's one of my favorite picks. This is their album before that called uh, Phantom Limb. Uh, if you even remotely like Wyoming, I think you'll like this one even more. Um, but I do love Wyoming. I'm not saying that either one's bad. The album, not the state. Yeah, yeah, no, not, <laughs> not the state. It's windy up there. Uh, Water Liars. LP and CD. Yeah, pick it up. Um, in the last uh, videos before, we talked about some, uh, like Thursday on Victory Records was reissuing vinyl. They have another reissue coming up. But in the meantime, uh, basically, uh, Victory Records is taking advantage of this big vinyl comeback. And they are releasing almost everything on their catalog in big chunks at a time. They're getting a whole new group of, uh, a whole new age group and a whole new demographic of people who wouldn't typically be vinyl buyers to actually be interested in vinyl and to go pick yeah. up vinyl. So, so first off, we got basically all the Amir albums. You got Felony, The Respect Issue, Goodbye to the Gallows, Speaker of the Dead, and whatever this Slave one's called. Slave to the Game. Slave to the Game. So um, that's what, five Amir albums. So if you w love Amir and you're starting to buy records now, they got you in mind. And they're really good pricing. They're between $13 and $17, so they're not overly expensive records. So you can start your collection and build the things you love and not spend an arm and a leg on $30 records. These are actually good at price, affordable ones. And then also... And same I, with Data Remember. There's a ton of really devoted fans of Data Remember, so um, they're releasing all these for them. So we've got Homesick, uh, For Those Who Have Heart, uh, What Separates Me From You, and old record, all released on LP, same as the Amir, Amir re reissues, same price points. Yeah. Um, Some of these have been out on vinyl cool. before, but they were a long time ago, and they you know haven't been around, and then now bringing them all back. So, uh, good on Victory. If you're a Victory Records fan, it, you're going to be really happy for the next what eight months because everything comes <laughs> every week. They have like a bunch of reissues coming out. Yep. Um, there's plenty of more music, so we won't. We're going to hop into movies because we got a ton of movies this week. Same thing, Feast or Famine. There's like no releases, and then all of a sudden there's a hundred releases. So uh, we still have more music in the stores coming in. That's probably about a quarter of what we could actually talk about. Um, movies that are coming out: uh, Oblivion, sci-fi starring Tom Cruise and Morgan Freeman. Um, 
mixed reviews? Got mixed reviews in the theater, but it did get praised. I mean, it was like a lot of people liked the design. It was very pretty. Um, it was just was something that, like, I think story wise, some people were left wanting a little bit. Uh, I haven't actually seen it yet, but I'm looking forward to the fact that it's on Blu ray and DVD now because then I can actually yeah. like, here, give it a er, shot everything and watch it. And everything you hear is about how gorgeous it is. And also, the soundtrack, which we've sold separately on vinyl and CD, is done by M83. And the Blu ray, uh, we have it on regular DVD, but the Blu ray has the isolated M83 score that you can just watch. Uh, the entire film accompanied by the soundtrack, just the music track, which is really cool. It's a kind of a new feature I haven't seen on too many DVDs. Definitely worth checking out. I'll be watching it. So. Uh, a Place Beyond the Pines, starring Bradley Cooper and Ryan Gosling and Ava Mendez. Uh, kind of low-key indie site, you know, hit the circuit. Wasn't, you know, played at some of the smaller theaters and stuff. Wasn't a huge release, uh, but here it's very good. It is directed by Derek she in France, or she in France, whatever how you say his name. Uh, he did another movie before this, and I can't remember the name of it right now. Yeah. Ryan Gosling plays a uh, motocross rider for the circus. Basically, he's a stunt rider. Basically. He's like a stunt rider who robs banks to support a family he didn't know he had. So uh, it's and then Black Bradley Cooper's the uh, the cop, the law enforcement, trying to catch him. So it's kind of a cool crime thriller. It's set set in a small town, small towns. Oh, so. he, the guy, the director who did Blue Valentine, another Gosling sad movie. I bum out. <laughs> um, there's always a great cameo. He might have a smaller part in this, but he plays a good guy or a bad cop always. Ray Liotta, my always favorite plays bad, cop. A bad cop. <laughs> He's in this as well. Um, a movie that I went and saw and fell in love with immediately. Uh, coming of age story about two young guys um, involving kind of almost a fairy tale story. With this guy, they meet on. Uh, they live in uh, on the river. They're like it's set in the, the banks in the ri the Mississippi River. Um, they run into Matthew McConaughey's character who's living on an island. His name's in, Mud, in the Mississippi. And uh, as they talk to him and figure out more about his life story, they they start piecing together events that are happening in their town that are related to him and and how it factors into their lives and them growing up. And it's a it's a slow moving movie. It's a slow burner, but it's got a big big loud climax and it's yeah. really 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 great Direct, it's directed by Jeff Nichols Jeff Nichols did um, take shelter a couple years ago which is another movie I'm just fascinated by I think Jeff Nichols is one of our best directors we have nowadays um, features Reese, Reese Witherspoon and Matthew McConaughey but also Sam Shepard and uh, Jeff Nichols go to Michael Shannon's in it as well has a small part but it's great yeah and normally I don't like kid or young teen actors in in anything but the two boys that play the young teens in this that are they're 14 or 15 they're fantastic in it they're great actors as well don't so. be thrown off by matthew mcconaughey either he's done some really great stuff in the last year so check that out You're not playing a surfer dude <laughs> <laughs> no bongos brother uh west of memphis documentary produced by peter jackson um about the west memphis three uh, if you don't know about the West Memphis Three, you will not care about this at all. But if you even have a remote vague, there was the HBO documentaries that were out. Um, this is a another version that they did. These guys did separately. Uh, Peter Jackson was very active in the helping them with build a defense and you know supporting them with money and stuff. Um, and this is a very cool documentary. Uh, I went and saw it and really enjoyed it. It was a huge hit at Sundance and it's been playing around. And it's Kafka-esque. It's <laughs> <laughs> most Kafka-esque crimes in American history. Uh, thrilling. Um, Damien Eccles actually has a book that just came out too. If you're into this stuff, I suggest reading it. It's really interesting to hear about you know what he's gone through since he was a kid and being in prison. And very very cool. Um, a couple movies I don't know much about, but I know they're on IFC Midnight, which is a cool. You know, they IFC Midnight does really cool weird movies. This one's called Antiviral, and the the catch on this is a celebrity obsessed world where you can actually. Inject yourself with people pay to be in people pay to be infected by celebrities like by illnesses celebrities have. So if a celebrity is sick, they want to be sick with the same germs, the same infection that that celebrity has. And so people pay to be injected with a celebrity's illness, um, so they can share in something almost at like a DNA level. It's it's really strange. It's kind of a sci-fi premise, but you know, really creepy and uh, you know, a near future type it's thing. Directed, it's the director, di directorial debut of Brandon Cronenberg. Just stew on that name. <laughs> Uh, Eli Roth produced and starred in this movie directed by Nicholas Lopez um, I've read really terrible reviews but also read really fun things it's a it's a horror movie that's basically about a giant earthquake in uh, is it Chile yeah, yeah they're in Chile and uh, he's partying there it's a, like a hostel setup where he's partying having fun meets some hot girls 
then a giant earthquake hits Chile and uh, it turns into a horror slash survival disaster movie with looters and Escape aftershocks convicts and, and <laughs> aftershock tremors. So it's it's Eli Roth, so you know it'll just be way way gross, really violent and uh, depraved. So it says debauched mayhem is the review. So there you go. There you go. Um, some Blu-ray reissues we want to talk about. Um, Don Johnson in A Boy and His Dog. Yeah, this uh, this is a really, really cool Blu-ray reissue because A Boy and His Dog is actually kind of the movie that kicked off the entire post-apocalyptic genre. Um, it's about a guy and his telepathic dog that, you know, can speak telepathically to him, uh, wandering the atomic wasteland and uh, finding, like, a weirdo sex cult underground and all kinds of st uh, strange stuff. But it kind of laid the groundwork for video games like Fallout, stuff like um, Mad Max and, and Road Warrior. I mean, it's kind of the prototypical big post-apocalyptic movie that really has a lot of those things that are tropes or stereotypes about the genre now came from this movie. And so if you're a fan of the post-apocalyptic movie genre like I am, then this is kind of your starting point for that yeah. sort of thing. And this movie's based on the uh, the novella by Harlan Ellison. So Famous writer. So. Hardcore sci-fi dude, right? Well, he's just... I, I don't know if everything he's done is sci-fi, but yeah. he's big. His big name writer. gets thrown around all the time, so there you go. Uh, I have no idea, but this is a weird one. It's called Freaked. Apparently, it's one of the best unknown movies ever made by Inter says Entertainment Weekly, starring Randy Quaid, Bobcat Goldthwait, Keanu Reeves is in it, Mr. T, T. Morgan Fairchild, Alex Winter. Uh, this is oh, it's co-directed by Alex Winter. That's what the special thing is. So Alex Winter, if you don't know, was from Bill and Ted. He's the other dude, the not Keanu guy. Not Keanu. Yeah. So check that out if you like weird B movies. Uh, one of the best B movies from the '80s ever. Swamp Thing is being reproduced on vinyl or on Blu-ray. Um, we have it at all locations. Adrienne Barbeau, if you've been to any Comic-Con ever, even the small ones or any comic book show, she's always there signing autographs. <laughs> uh, maybe she's coming to Salt Lake. I don't know. But check this one out. And then one of my favorite movies as a kid from 80s, Lucas, starring Winona Ryder, Charlie Sheen, and uh, Corey Haim before he was a weirdo and, and dead. Uh, Jeremy Piven's actually in this movie too. <laughs> Is that? Oh, that's him that's right Jeremy there, Piven. Yeah. yeah, that's before he had hair. So, or it was when his hair was going away back when he was young. So, uh, it's a really good movie about a, kind of a loser kid in school that everyone's kind of mean to, but Charlie Sheen befriends him and he's got a thing for the girl. And it's, Joins a football team to win the girl. Yeah. It's a good, good eighties movie. It's, so. it's really good. It's one of my favorites. Uh, some Disney Vault classics back on Blu-ray. Oliver and Company, twenty-fifth anniversary edition. Everybody loves Oliver and Company. Sword in the Stone, 50th anniversary. This is a really great one. And my favorite Disney movie of all time, 40th anniversary edition of Robin Hood. Uh, very good. All of them on Blu-ray for the first time. Um, limited times, they'll be out for a while, and then they'll go in the vault again. Classic so. Disney. So get them while you can right now. But they're Blu-ray, DVD, digital copy combo packs. So you get every format on any playable device in your house. Yeah. So And they're all remastered, digital restoration, really cool looking. And then, oh, I forgot On the Road. On the Road, based on the Kerouac novel, uh, directed by Walter Salas, uh, or Sales. I don't know how I say his name, but he's made a lot of good movies that are always slow burners. Check this one out as well. Um, we have it. And then last but not least, the infamous fourth season of Community on DVD, the, the Dan Harmon-less fourth season. Uh, community fans still will support and follow. A show that will not die, yeah. but is coming back. Because so. Dan Harmon's back. Chevy mm -hmm. Chase is gone, Dan Harmon's back. So there you go, community fans. Uh, that's pretty much it for releases we wanted to show you. I do want to mention a couple little things real quick. Uh, Craft Lake City, Slug Magazine uh, is putting on, the people at Slug, Angela Brown specifically, the uh, editor of Slug, started uh, Craft Lake City. Uh, when you watch this video, it will probably be on the second or third. So uh, the Friday, is it the 8th? And... Yep, Saturday the 9th. Friday the 8th, or August 9th, Friday, from 5 to 10 p.m., Craft Lake is at Gallivan Center, and then all day su Saturday, 12 to 10 on the 10th. Um, go check out Craft Lake City. We're really involved with the Buy First local community. There's a lot of local artisans and artists and techno geeks and a lot of cool things. This event's now in the fifth year, and it just keeps getting better and better every year. I'm so happy for them, what they do, and uh, you should definitely support it. Go out. It's a free event. You can go take some cash with you, go buy some cool stuff. You can buy art prints and anything you can imagine. Uh, so go check it out. And then last but not least, Greywell and Salt Pop will be at Salt Lake Comic Con this year. It's yeah. the first annual Salt Lake Comic Con. We're going to have a booth there. 
selling all kinds of stuff. It'll be uh, September 5th through 7th at the Salt Palace Convention Center. Um, like you mentioned, we're going to be selling tons and tons of Graywell stuff. Um, lots of uh, just basically anything that we have that that will be for that group of people who will be at Comic Con. So if you're there, uh, so if you haven't heard about it, look into it and go. Yep. Tickets are available now and they're going fast. They had to move it from the Southtown Expo Center to downtown because it sold out so quickly and they want to get more people in. So get your tickets so now. It's, it's going to be legitimate. It's going to be a big deal. We'll be there. So come say hi. Um, like you said, uh, all of the uh, Salt Pop podcast guys will be there, and all of the and Graywell will be there as well in the same booth together. So it'll come be a us. great time. Yeah. Otherwise, all the releases, uh, as always, come in, check out the new release sheet. The the store, the managers and the other employees of the store will be happy to show you and go through it with you. And follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Graywell SLC, as well as Facebook at uh, facebook.com slash Graywell. Yep. And uh, all the YouTube channels, you're, obviously you're on our YouTube channel now. It's youtube.com slash Utah. Please subscribe, and then you'll get these updates as soon as they get uploaded every Tuesday morning. And uh, also check out uh, saltpop.net and saltpop's YouTube channel, uh, saltpopofficial, youtube.com slash saltpopofficial, for all of our video updates, streaming video games, our weekly recorded uh, video casts, and uh, for articles dealing with pop culture at saltpop.net. Sorry for the long video, just a lot of stuff to talk about. Have a good time. Bye.